Mallory's Infants is a two-form entry school in northwest London. With 61% of pupils learning English as an additional language and 32% designated as special needs, they've achieved impressive results in literacy. Their Key Stage 1 teacher assessment shows 88% of pupils reading at level 2 and above, rising to 96 for writing and 97 for speaking and listening. In this programme, we'll look at the vital contribution of support staff and trainee teachers at Mallory's to the teaching of literacy at Key Stage 1, particularly in running interventions both in and outside the classroom. We're very fortunate in our school because we do have a small number of support staff, but the small number of support staff that we have have been chosen very, very carefully and they are of very high calibre. Teaching assistant Maria Stiliano, doubling as school welfare officer, runs the Talking Partners intervention at Key Stage 1, as well as supporting reading and writing in the classroom. Right guys, today we're going to be playing the barrier game and drawing a picture, giving okay. each other instructions. But first, we're going to have a look at these pictures. And we're each going to have a go at describing a picture. And the rest of us have to try and guess what picture we're describing. The aims of Talking Partners is, firstly, to encourage children in the classroom to speak up. There, there are those who tend to sit back and not put their hand up. It also encourages good listening skills and also to extend their vocabulary and give them an opportunity to talk and then hopefully all that will come together and, and make them better listeners and speakers in the classroom. There is um, a boy mm. eating a sandwich, right. reading a book, there's a frog jumping. Right, who knows what picture Zamzam's describing? Choose somebody. Zara. I mean that one. Is, is Did you think the description was quite good? Yes. Did she give you lots of clues? Yes. Right. The planning for Talking Partners does involve a certain amount of writing, so for each session there is a... Uh, you fill in the sheet of the activities you want to do and what, what you'd like the outcomes to be. And that's for every session, so that's three per week, per year group, so that's six sheets of planning you have to do, so it is quite paper rich. Amir, would you like to have a go at describing a picture? There's a boy who's taking his book in the bath mm. and the teddy is in the bath playing with the ball. Sarah, which picture did Amir describe? It's this picture. Did you think he described it quite well? Yes. When we first started um, the program their description would be basically just a few of the things they saw in the picture. So, for example, they would have said this is a picture of a boy and in a bath, where as, as the programme progresses, um, they're encouraged, and they often do it off their own backs, they extend their description and they include a lot, a lot more of, of what they can see in the picture, so it's not just a one or two word um, answer. Right, now, ready for the barrier game? Yes. One of the games that they really enjoy is, is the barrier game. And that can consist of giving instructions over the barrier um, to, to one of the children. And at, by the end of it, if the instructions were clear, the picture should be almost the same. You're a square. What size is it? It's a medium size. Medium size. Well done. Draw the roof on top of the um, square. Give her a clue as to what shape you want it's it to be. It's a little triangle. Do two square shapes, medium size, in the middle of the house. For the person giving the instruction, it just shows how much thought has to go in to preparing the sentence in their head, making sure it's all ready to be spoken. Right. Do you want to have a look? That's what your picture should look like. <laughs> We started off well and yeah, then we and then the middle and the last bit was uh, not so good because we never put more and more and more information. Information. Could you have asked for more information as well to help yes. you? Yes. So if ever you're not sure, what should you do? Put your hand up. Tell them, give me more information. Yes, please. So yeah. do you see how important it is to talk amongst yourself? Yeah. To make sure you understand everything? Yeah. Well done, guys. That's brilliant. The intervention programme training 
has not just trained the teaching assistants, either myself or one of the year one teachers also accompanied the teaching assistants so that we had a key member of staff to be able to monitor and ensure the progress and the, the quality of the intervention programmes. Esther Krivonoska is a part-time teaching assistant supporting children on the Wave 3 intervention. Can you remember to point to the words as you're reading? All right, good girl, off you go. Wave 3 covers reading and writing. It's a one-to-one, -one, quite intense, everyday session of about 20 minutes. What does Mum say? No, um... Not? Not now, I'm too busy. Good girl, well done. Being able to plan definitely makes a difference. I don't like having to do things on the hoof. There's more continuity as well, if you can maybe plan perhaps two or three sessions. What does Mum say? We're too busy. Good girl, well done. I've got some little cards here with words on. See if you can find two of the words that are the same. That's can. Can and can, excellent. Right, you get another go now. The Wave 3 training is over a period of three days. The first session is the assessment procedure. The second day is the reading. And the third day is writing. Now we're just going to do some writing. Perhaps our sentence could be, I like to play basketball. What do you think? Is that OK? It's very important that the sentence looks nice and looks, there's no crossings out, so if she does something wrong, I'll put a bit of sticky paper over it so that it looks perfect at the end of it. That's very important. Fantastic. What goes on the end of the sentence? Mmm, very good, well done. Right, the last thing we're going to do, I'm actually going to write that sentence. And we're going to cut it up and put it in order. Do you remember how we did yesterday? Well done. Can you read that just one more time? I like to play basketball full stop. Good, well done, Sabrine. That's it for today. So how's Sabrine doing? Yeah, she's doing fine. Um, I'm a bit concerned about her speech still. If I've got any concerns about the child or I feel she's doing particularly well, then I'll have a chat with usually the class teacher. She has problems with her G's and D's, which makes it difficult, like, for the um, first sound of a word. Right, so you think that's something that needs focusing yeah, on for next time? Yeah, definitely, definitely. OK, I'd so if you work so. on, keep yeah. working on that then? Yeah, yeah, OK, okay that's fine. Right. And once they're integrated back into the classroom full time, the progress that most of the children have made has been very encouraging. That's the basic premise that the programme wants to offer is children independent strategies to develop their learning and continue their learning in literacy. Right children, today we're going to play our describing game. Teaching assistant Sharon Williams supports speech and language development for children with special educational needs. So what I want you to do is tell me the name of the thing that I show you and then Ali, do you want to tell me which three describing areas I said we're going to use today? We're going to use... Your size is colour. That's right. It's, um, it's shiny. Begins with a... T Wash your hands. Wash your hands. Good, good help in there, Ali. It's a tap. Tap. It's a tap, that's right. Do you know what this is? Yes. It's a... Hearing the clock ring. Oh, hearing the clock ring. You could be doing that. I think it's supposed to be a, a radio. It's about encouraging them to speak and describe using adjectives, using using parts of speech that we would not we, we not, we would normally use and we take for granted. But for these children, it's actually quite difficult. Today, we worked in a classroom situation because it, it was about allowing them to feel comfortable doing this in class with other children around. It's pink and white and purple. Often, children who are taken away from the classroom situation can feel that, you know, they're at some sort of um, disadvantage, but by having them in the classroom, they, they, it actually gives them a positive feeling, and other children can then see as well what, what they've been doing. 
What do I have in my hand? What card is this? Tell it's me. a plant. It looks like a plant, okay. And it's got green berries. It's got green berries. That's good describing. They're learning, but they don't really see that they're learning. They just see it that they're playing a game. And then what I would do with them in the classroom sometimes is give what we're doing in the game, in the classroom situation, a context. So try to bring those two things together in their minds so that they understand that, it, that although it's a game, it's also part of their learning. Welcome, Kong Shi. Sao Shang Hao. Jo Trevelyan joined the school as a teaching assistant before becoming a trainee teacher. She's role playing a character from a traditional Chinese story. As a teaching assistant, I worked across year one and year two, but I primarily worked within numeracy rather than literacy. So my experience of literacy in um, year one is limited to my wave three work as a teaching assistant, which is why it will be very important for me to spend at least half a term within year one to get a sense of how you teach five to six year olds. Does anybody want to ask Kung Shi any questions about her father? When you were locked in the dungeon, um, how old was he? My mother had me when he was old and by the time that I grew up he was very, very old and his eyes were wrinkled around the edges and he had white, white hair. The major difference between being a teaching assistant and a graduate trainee is that as a graduate trainee you are taking responsibility for the planning and the delivery and the assessment of a lesson. When you work as a teaching assistant, you are helping to deliver the lesson plan. As Joe's school-based mentor, head teacher Sean Davis makes regular lesson observations. Making a decision about where to place Jo for her block practice, I needed to consider carefully about putting her in, in a really good um, environment where she was going to get um, a lot of support and encouragement. And in doing so, it worked out well for us that she was able to then be placed with Catherine Gallimore, who is her class-based mentor. So they have started off a sort of partnership together so that Catherine could give her the necessary support to develop her literacy skills. Kungshi, the children have been writing some descriptions of yourself and some of the other characters in the story. Chang was Kungshi's boyfriend. They met each other under the blossom trees. What I have learned is that these extremely experienced teachers who I have been observing are like swans on a lake. They glide effortlessly along, but underneath they're paddling like crazy. And it's an extraordinarily difficult job to teach literacy well. When you have such high caliber support staff, even though they're spread thinly, they offer such value whenever they're used and the intervention programs alone show the benefit of using them in the way that we've chosen to use them. 